Hello everybody, yeah, we're back. A car, here's a question. Uh, today's lesson is gonna be on slopes and friction on a slope. So we have a question here, it says a car is sliding down a 32 degree slope from rest. If the car is 25 meters long, sorry, not the car, <laughs> let me start that again. If the hill is 25 meters long, what will the velocity of the car be at the bottom of the hill? Now we are missing one other piece of information, and that is that the coefficient of friction is equal to 0.38. Now th that's the kinetic coefficient of friction because the car is sliding. So the wheels are locked, Let's draw a little picture here of what's going on. Here's the slope. We've got uh, 32 degrees. And the car is here at the top. And the car starts from rest, so the initial velocity of the car is zero. And the distance between here and here is 25 meters long. So when it gets to the bottom of the hill, what we want to know is what's the velocity, what's the final velocity here? Question mark. Okay? And we are given mu k is 0.38. So how do we do this? Pause the video now and see if you can figure it out. All right, so this solution, we're going to draw the free body diagram here of the object. And we're going to say, you know, what's touching it plus gravity? Well, we've got friction going in this direction, this is sliding down the slope, so friction is opposite to the direction of motion. We've got another thing that's touching it is the slope, which produces a normal force. We've also got gravity perpendicular to the slope at mg cosine theta. And we've also got gravity parallel to the slope, pulling at mg sine theta. And now we can write down summation of the forces, oops, equals f net. Now, what direction am I choosing here? I'm choosing the direction along the slope here. So fn and mg cosine are equal and opposite. Okay, but gravity, mg sine theta, and friction are opposed to one another, and they're not going to cancel each other because this car is going to have an acceleration. Now, the one thing we need to realize here is that friction is equal to mu fn, and in this case, since the normal force is equal to the force of gravity, we know that friction is going to equal mu mg cosine theta. Now we can finish writing this <coughs> summation of the forces. So if we choose, for example, which direction, I usually choose the the direction of motion as the positive direction. So in this case, this object or this car is sliding down the hill, so I'll pick down the hill as positive. That'll give me mg sine theta positive minus friction equaling ma. And now I'll make the substitution for friction mg sine theta minus mu mg cosine theta 
equals ma. And now you notice that in the question, I did not give you the mass of the car because you don't need it. The mass cancels out. And now the acceleration ends up being, we can factor g out of this. And we get sine theta minus mu cosine theta equals a. Now, the problem is not actually asking for a. The problem is saying, what will the final, what will the velocity of the car be? It's actually asking for the final velocity. But in order to get that final velocity, we need the acceleration. The other thing we're given is the delta d that the car travels. So we know delta d is equal to 25 meters. We know that the initial velocity is 0. We now can calculate the acceleration. And we're looking for the final velocity. So let's, well, we know which equation this is. There's only one equation that's going to work here. V final squared is equal to V initial squared plus 2A delta D. And we know this guy is 0. And so 2 times, now let's go and calculate A. 9.8 times sine, oops, uh, instead of writing theta there, let's actually put the angle in, 32 from here, minus, and mu was 0 0.38, 0 0.38 times cosine, 32, and for A we get, 2.035 meters per second squared for A. And so now we can take that value and plug it into this equation here, where we go 2 times 2.035 times a delta D of 25. And if we take the square root of that, we'll get our final velocity. And that's going to give us and that's going to give us approximately 10 meters per second. And if we want to represent that in kilometers per hour, it's approximately multiplied by 3.6, 36 kilometers per hour. And that's going to be our final velocity at the bottom of the hill. Remember, this initial velocity was 0. Okay, hopefully that was an easy problem uh, to solve. Okay. So here's our next question. Our next question is uh, a strong person. By the way, this is kind of unrealistic. This is a 400 kilogram piano. A person is pushing a piano up a 25 percent uh, inclined ramp with a constant velocity, what force must they push with if the piano is 400 kilograms and mu k, the coefficient of, sta of uh, not static, the coefficient of kinetic friction is 0.2. So the piano is sliding up this hill as the, per as the person is pushing it. The piano is pretty big, 400 kilos is a very big piano, probably a grand piano. And um, this is basically impossible for one person to do, but it's just a physics question, so give it a shot. Pause the video now and see if you can figure out the, uh, the force with which the person must push. Okay, so in this question, we've, we've got a picture here of a, uh, here's the piano, and here is this uh, person pushing it up the hill. Now, remember, when we draw the free body diagram 
uh, we have to say what's touching it plus gravity. So there's going to be a force that the person is pushing with uphill. That's the applied force. Then in the opposite direction to motion, we're going to have a friction force. And also, we've got gravity going downhill along the slope with mg sine theta. Now, I'm, I'm going to say, since the box is moving up the hill in this case, I'm going to say up is positive. And now, I'm going to write out my summation of the forces is equal to F net. Remembering that friction equals mu Fn. And since Fn is here, it is equal and opposite to mg cosine theta. So I know this is, this is going to equal mg cosine theta. Now, let me finish the summation of the forces equation here. I've got. F applied, that's positive, minus friction, which is mu mg cosine theta, minus gravity mg sine theta. And all that is going to equal ma. OK? And but here's something that we need to take note of from the question, it says that it's being pushed with a constant velocity. Now, if you have a constant velocity, that means your acceleration is zero. Therefore, this whole side is equal to zero. So now I can rewrite the equation as saying the applied force is equal to, and take this, these two terms and put them on the other side, they both become positive. It's going to be mu mg cosine theta plus mg sine theta. And now I can simplify it a little bit by factoring out the mg. And I'll have mu cosine theta plus sine theta. And now I can plug in my numbers. My mass is 400. And mu was 0.2. And theta was 25. 0.2 cosine 25 plus sine 25. And I'll get for my answer. So my answer ends up being. 2367 newtons or 2367 newtons. Now, this seems unrealistic for one for one person to apply that much force. After all, if we go, you know, 2367 divided by 9.8, that's like the equivalent force of 241 uh, kilograms. But it doesn't matter. Maybe it's a machine pushing this up. Uh, but whatever it is, we did the question right. It just seems unrealistic that a person could achieve that much force. You'd have to have multiple people doing this. So here's our next question. It says, a runaway truck with a velocity of 100 kilometers per hour heads up a 29 uh, degrees to the horizontal runaway hill. So basically what this means is, if you're kind of run wondering what does runaway mean, it just means that on some long descents in a hilly terrain, if a truck's brakes fail, what they have is they have a side road that leads off of the main road, but and then it goes uphill so that the 
runaway vehicle, which is usually going to be a truck with air brakes, they have a, me a mechanism or a way to stop the vehicle if their brakes kind of fail. But in this case, usually it's, uh, it's like gravel. So I've created a coefficient of, of kinetic friction of 0.22. Uh, not sure if that's exactly precise. It's probably going to be more than that. But um, in any case, the question's asking, how far up will the truck travel before, with an E there, before it stops? So if I draw you a picture of this, here is the slope, here is the 29 degrees, here is the, or actually we should put the truck starting at the bottom here. The truck is starting at the bottom and it has an initial velocity going uphill at 100 kilometers per hour. And the question is, eventually the truck is going to come with a, to a final velocity to a stop. The question is, what is this distance delta D? What's that distance going to be? So go ahead and uh, Pause the video now and solve the problem. Okay, so the solution to this problem, uh, let's draw the free body diagram here. And we have this truck going up the hill. Um, a lot of times people will think, gosh, if it's going up the hill, there must be an applied force going up the hill but actually there is not because this person is not hitting the accelerator going up the hill nothing's pushing this thing up the hill they're actually uh, using their brakes and they're sliding up the hill the reason why they're going uphill is because there's an initial velocity in that direction so in reality here we only have two forces one of them is friction which acts opposite to the direction of motion and the other one is gravity pulling downhill okay now we do have obviously perpendicularly to the plane we do have normal force and we do have mg cosine theta which cancel or which are equal and opposite but we're not concerned about those ones we're concerned about the forces in the direction of the slope and there's only two of them and they're both opposite to the direction that the thing is moving. So if we say summation of the forces is equal to F net, we've got negative, because I'm going to take the direction that it's moving, which is up the hill, as being positive. So I'll say I have negative friction minus mg sine theta, and that's going to give me m. A. Now I'm going to replace friction with mu Fn, and I, and I know that Fn is equal to mg cosine theta, so I've got negative mu mg cosine theta minus mg sine theta equals Ma. And now, if you're wondering why I did not in this question why I did not give you the mass of the truck it's because you don't need it because if you look at what, what I've got here I can divide this equation by M and the M's cancel out so it doesn't matter what the mass is it wouldn't make a difference it's not required in the equation now I can factor out a negative G here and I'll get mu cosine theta plus sine theta equaling A. The negative G comes out and that's what we're left with. Now if we do this calculation, negative 9.8, now our um, mu was 0.2 and theta was 
sorry, point two two and theta is twenty nine. So point two two cosine twenty nine plus sine oops twenty nine equaling a. And for our acceleration we will get so my answer I get is negative six point six four meters per second squared. That means this thing is slowing down. And remember, these questions where it's asking you for, this problem is asking you for a, a delta D, that's what we need to find here. This is a kinematics problem. And the only way to go from the world of dynamics to the world of kinematics is over that bridge called acceleration. So once we have our, now our acceleration, we can cross this bridge and now it turns into a kinematics problem. And the equation that I'm going to need, remember there's three equations in kinematics. I'll just for review, we'll just write them out again. 1 half AT squared plus VIT and then we've got V final equals AT plus VI but those aren't the ones we need because we're not dealing with time at all the one we need is V final squared equals V initial squared plus 2A delta D and we want to solve for delta D so we'll take this equation and we'll solve for delta D. We'll say delta D, rearranging a little bit of algebra. We'll say V final squared minus V initial squared divided by 2A. You should be able to take this equation and man algebraically manipulate it and solve for delta D. Now we will put in our values. Now our final velocity we know at the top is zero. Okay, so we'll put that in here. And our initial velocity was 100 kilometers per hour, but that's the wrong unit. So remember, we're going to have to divide by 3.6. That's the conversion factor to get to meters per second, because meter per second is the smaller number. And now we'll go two times negative 6.64 in the denominator and we'll get an answer of so my answer ends up being 58.1 meters and uh, also notice that my negatives cancel each other out in the numerator and the denominator so that means I need about 58 meters for this vehicle to stop, to come to a stop. So that's, you'd at least have to make, I mean, that's, that's the minimum requirement. You'd probably, if you were like a civil engineer, you'd probably want to make this thing longer than that. But that's the, that's, that's the minimum amount you're going to need for it to stop. So that's the end of this question and also this video. Thanks for watching.